And good morning and welcome back. It is 5.51 and Dr. Ravi Patel from the Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center is joining us this morning to talk about our monthly cancer updates. Always good to see you and welcome. Thank you, Gilly. Yes. Well, we have three questions we're going to talk about this morning, three very important questions. Let's go to the first one. The first one, is there a new treatment available for prostate cancer and how does it work? Uh, some real good hope for prostate cancer patients. The FDA just recently approved a treatment which stimulates your immune system mm -hmm to recognize cancer cells. And most important, it's not very toxic. And uh, it takes the body's own white cells, primes them with cancer recognizing proteins and injects it back so that your immune system can attack the cancer cells. So the data is out. So once it recognizes those cells, it can just attack those cells and not others? And not others. Wow. Very targeted, relatively non-toxic, can be all done as an outpatient. Wonderful. That's great research done right there. The second question that we have this morning is do vitamin and calcium supplements reduce cancer risk? I know a lot of people will tell you they swear by it, yes. but what does the research show? Well, you know, what happens is our normal cells in the body go to, through day-to-day -day stress where they get damaged. And cancer cells forget that ability to repair themselves. Mm -hmm. And so what they found is that calcium and vitamins appear to allow the cells to re-establish that ability to repair themselves. So the DNA repairs itself and uh, much better with that. So I wouldn't take mega doses of calcium and vitamins, but just the normal amounts, and it seems to definitely help. And the third question that we have this morning is, what herbal supplements can I take to improve my immune system during the treatment for cancer? A lot of people are interested in knowing that, but uh, you have to be very careful during treatment to take herbal supplements because many chemotherapy drugs, as an example, ant antioxidants mm -hmm. will affect mechanisms with which chemotherapy work. So you must try and discuss any herbal supplements you want to take with your physician because they can damage the way treatment works. How about a multivitamin? Is a multivitamin going to be okay? Multivitamin okay. should be okay. That should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. Dr. Patel, always good to see you. And we'll have another set of questions for you next month. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. That's a good point. All right, Vaughn, thank you very much. I've gone through that one on coffee. It does get a little tight there, especially in the early morning hours. All right, uh, let's talk about some medical news now here this morning. Walgreens Drugstore has decided to postpone sales of what was going to be the first over-the-counter genetic test kit. The drugstore was going to start selling the kits for several hundred dollars. The saliva collection kit would uh, provide a personalized screening for genes associated with inherited diseases like breast cancer, cystic fibrosis, and diabetes. But the FDA said this week that the kits had never been proven uh, effective entirely, and so they're going to take another look at it. Walgreens, meantime, saying because the FDA investigation is ongoing, they're not going to start selling them in stores, but they are available online. And uh, these things, I think, have been online for quite some time. Dr. Ravi Patel, Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center, in with us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Kish. Good morning. We talk a lot about genetic tests all the time with, yes. with cancers, particularly breast cancer. It seems to be the one where they talk to a, a lot about that. What do you think about these home tests? You have to be very careful uh, based on these tests. You want to be careful of a test which you're buying where you buy your laxatives and your toothpaste you uh -huh. know, at the same right. time. You're talking about but, something that determines your future here yeah. uh, along with the toothpaste. Yeah. It's a very serious thing and you know uh, if only five to ten percent of the cancers are genetically driven. Mm -hmm. So you know if you get a genetic test which maybe says that you're gonna get breast cancer there's a 90% chance you may not even get it related to the gene itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could make some wrong and right decisions. If somebody says that, well, the gene test is negative, you may not even dec you may decide not to get a mammogram, which is very dangerous, that I'm not going to get it. Mm -hmm. So the average consumer does not have a good handle on how to make a decision on these genes. And that's very critical. It, the information is there, but, but uh, interpreting that information is the most important part. Most important. Yeah. Therefore, what the consumer needs to do mm -hmm. is go through a genetic counseling clinic which can give them more accurate information. Or if they get these kind of tests, 
they need to be sure that they discuss it with a physician because mm -hmm. they can make very dangerous conclusions. Right, because if you say, you, okay, you don't have this gene, you may get a cancer that's not genetic related. Yes. And the other thing that's, that's true here as well, and, I, and I've seen stories on this on, on news programs, I think it was on 60 Minutes, where people were getting these genetic tests, and it's not a guarantee just because you have the gene that you're going to get cancer, right? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. you see, the thing is that what they are using is what are called SNPs. Mm -hmm. And SNPs have uh, hair, uh, found with, associated with cancer, but the risk of developing the cancer may be even less than 3%. So it really doesn't uh, connect very well. Mm -hmm. and, and the important thing is, don't forget your lifestyle modification things. If you're assuming you've got some certain genes, mm -hmm. if I tell you you've got a risk for diabetes, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to try and keep your weight down, mm -hmm. live a healthy lifestyle. So you continue doing all of those things, mm -hmm. and the problems can get corrected. And, and that's, that's kind of an important point, is because just because you have the gene doesn't mean necessarily going to develop, because there are other factors. It's, they call it multifactorial, right? Because there's a lot of factors that go into people getting cancer. And Absolutely, and there's 23,000 genes in your body, and one gene which is mutated could be switched off by another gene which is really controlling it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a complex area. Well, what do you think, I mean, because they're also talking about this for Alzheimer's and other diseases like that, and the Alzheimer's researchers say, hey, we don't even know exactly what causes Alzheimer's entirely, so this information, do you worry that it's going to go and be used yes. by the wrong hands? Yes, yeah. uh, very important. And the other, the important issue here, again, is the FDA does not have any oversight on this. And mm -hmm. uh, in the future, what they are planning to do is issue a lot of oversight guidance on this. For consumers also, another good site to look up is the American Society of Clinical Oncology, where several uh, oncologists, uh, you know, uh, oncological uh, uh, thought leaders mm -hmm. have put in uh, guidelines on what, what is a good way to get genetic testing done. And these direct-to-consumer genetic tests, how do you really screen them? But I think an average consumer needs to be very careful of interpreting them. All right, talk to your doctor first. Thank line. you. All right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm selling your services for yes. you. Dr. Ravi Patel, Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center. It's always a pleasure to have you in. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. in. Uh, we're going to have more on a uh, breaking news situation this morning. An officer involved shooting in which a suspect has now been killed. We'll have the latest uh, on the investigation coming up in a live report. All right, Alyssa, thank you. Medical news now, and the makers of the birth control pill, Yasmin, may end up in court, answering to deadly side effects being reported by some patients. 17's Jennifer Duck is in our studio tonight with details on that story. Jen? Jim, about 25 California patients have filed complaints against Yaz for causing blood clots and strokes. But one local doctor says it's not just Yasmin. All birth control pills carry a risk. Some are finding this pill hard to swallow. Complaints against Bayer's birth control pills, Yasmin and Yaz, are growing. 25 California women are some of hundreds across the country taking Bayer, the maker of Yaz and Yasmin, to court after being diagnosed with life-threatening blood clots. These little red dots here show that uh, you can develop a clot here. Dr. Ravi Patel says studies show the chemical drosperinone, which is found in Yasmin and Yaz, carries a greater risk for blood clots. There may be roughly a two to three times higher risk than some of the other birth control pills. But he says all birth control pills carry a risk for blood clots and other diseases and disorders. Hormonal replacement increases the risk of breast cancer, increases the risk of ovarian cancer, and increases the risk also of uterine cancer. For many people, the pill is safe. Dr. Patel says the key is to watch for symptoms like unusual chest pain, shortness of breath, coughing, pain in your legs, particularly in your calves, and pain associated with inflamed veins. If you take the pill and have any of these issues, you should see a doctor. Alma Linda Duran says the warnings were enough to keep her from taking any brand of birth control pills. Why go through that and even risk having that or having strokes? But Renee Lopez says just about every medicine carries risks, and you just have to be aware. There are side effects to everything that you take. So, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you take just uh, vitamins or over-the-counter. There's always something that could affect it. 17 News reached out to Bayer for comment, but they did not return our call. Coming up at 6, you'll hear more about the chemical in Yaz and Yasmin that many people are blaming for these increased side effects. Jim and Robin?
Welcome back, Dr. Ravi Patel with the CBCC is here now to answer some common questions that they get at the CBCC about cancer, and it's good to see you this morning. The same I have a whole me. list of them here, so let's uh, get started right away. Um, someone wants to know, how much damage does radiation therapy cause to normal tissue? Of course, you're trying to kill the bad tissue, but uh -huh. what about the normal? Well, uh, the newer generation equipment sort of targets and shapes the beam so you can control how deeply it goes. So, as an example, if you want to radiate the breast, you can target the beam just to the breast and make sure it doesn't go towards the deeper part of the chest and damage the lungs. Mm -hmm. So newer generation equipment, the answer to the question is it can cause damage, but very little compared to previous equipment. It has changed a lot. I remember I did a yes. story years ago about prostate, is it brachytherapy or brachytherapy? Yes. And yes. that was targeted. Very, very, yeah. and, and that's a very good example. You can uh, radiate the prostate now with very little damage to the bladder or the rectum, which are close by to the prostate. Yeah, and that's terrific that they made yeah. those advances. And then also, is there a new test to screen for ovarian cancer? You know, it's a, ovarian cancer is a sort of a silent killer because by the time you diagnose the patients, they're stage three or four. Mm -hmm. So people have always been looking for something new. It's not a new test. The test has always been available but the methodology to detect the blood test called the CA125 over a period of time is what uh, helps in diagnosing it early. So they track the increase in the numbers okay. over a period of time. What about detecting breast cancer? Because I've seen at some of the OBGYN offices that they have a new test there too. Yes, that's uh, what is called a PEP test, similar to what you, one uses for the pap smear. Uh -huh. It has been not scientifically, they're doing a lot of studies on it, but it's a good test to really work on, mm -hmm. but not yet as uh, completely reliable. Okay, so it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> All right, we have another question here. What is the meaning of targeted therapy and is it available now? Uh, you see, well, what happens in the past was uh, to try and treat cancer, it was more or less like throwing a bomb and expecting uh, all the bad guys to die and the good guys to live but it never happened everybody just got yeah. dead so the targeted therapy aims only at cancer cells and it's available now for breast cancer lymphoma and also lung cancer so you can intelligently only target cancer cells and minimize a lot of collateral damage so it's a seek and destroy mission which just seeks the cancer cells that's great yeah yeah because yeah, i know a long time ago it would like you said it would wipe yeah. out everything so It'll it's nice out. to have that yeah a lot of options with less toxicity yeah good all right dr ravi patel thanks so much for coming in As thank always, you we appreciate it thank and you. stay with us we'll be right back